Hello everyone, um, today we're going to do another chemical engineering principles video and this time the topic at hand is uh, degree of freedom analysis and the purpose of this video is to get a good understanding of the who, what, when, where, why of degree of freedom analysis. Now to do this um, I'm going to go over two examples that I chose and uh, one of them is easier than the other and we're going to sort of see how to how to tackle this type of question or whatnot. Now, degree of freedom analysis. Now, I know a lot of you, you know, you might look at these problems, especially at the beginning, and say, why do I have to do this degree of freedom analysis? I'm sure I could just solve the problem right now with, by just crunching out the numbers. It's a waste of time. Now, when you first start, obviously, you know, you could maybe solve it. But as you get later on in, your, in semester or later on in your first semester, you'll see that some questions are just, they might look like you have all the numbers, but you can't even solve them in reality. So, you know, you'd, you'd waste maybe, you know, 20, 30 minutes thinking you could solve something and, oh, you can't. It's impossible. And, you know, an uh, engineer's goal is to be as efficient as possible. And uh, unless you're a civil engineer being paid by the government, then no, you don't want to be insufficient. But uh, that's another scenario. Now, um, degree of freedom analysis. Now, if you go to your textbook, the latest edition on page 108 of the Chemical Engineering Principles, uh, they'll teach you the theory behind degree of freedom analysis, like what is, uh, what type of information, what do they classify under, like for example, anything with flow rates will be part of the mat material balance, while something like specific gravity uh, numbers would be um, uh, f physical properties and whatnot. Before you even start doing the degree of freedom, you always need to, of course, draw, uh, draw out your uh, information, like the, f the flow chart and whatnot. Now, here I have an example taken from an older edition of the textbook. Um, and the question description, that will be in the video's description right underneath, so you can just pause the video and write that information down when you please. Now, this question here, okay, is, uh, is, is says that there's two aqueous sulfuric acid solutions with different uh, concentrations. And now we're not really interested in the numbers here, like calculating them, we just, we want the information. And, um, they're going through a mixer and then they're simply being spat out in a new in a new solution mixture. Um, so here you can see I have already pre-written the diagram and whatnot. Of course, I encourage you to have uh, hopefully have done that by yourself before witnessing the answer. Now, this is simply the diagram, and now we are going to show the actual degree of freedom. So you'd normally you know you just write this on the side with all your information on the left here. So the first thing you got to think of are the unknowns. So the, well, the first thing you want to look at is like the flow rates. What flow rates do you have? What flow rates don't you, do you not have? Now in this case, we have three volumetric flow rates. Um, you have V1 that you don't know, there's V2 that we don't know, and there's V3 that we have no clue either. We do, however, have M1, which is the 100 ki kilograms so that was given to us. We don't know M2, and we don't know M3. So right away, we can write that we have five unknowns. And now another thing, if you want full marks, okay, from your TAs and Burke on the test, you have to write what the unknowns are. Because if you don't, Burke will say, you know, I'm happy that you know that there's five unknowns, but I want you to tell me what those unknowns are. Now, after you've written your unknowns, you want to say, okay, how can I... Uh, specifically get rid of those five unknowns. How am I going to subtract them? So, first thing you want to think about is the chemical species. So, if you have um, X number of chemical species, then you will have X number of balances. In this case, it's a very easy problem. So, we only have two chemical species, which are water and sulfuric acid. Therefore, we have minus two balances. And on top of that, if you simply read the question properly, you will know that we have three specific gravities. Now, sometimes you can, you know, in this case, we'll just write specific uh, gravities. But sometimes you could just say, you know, I have X number of spe uh, specifics. And then you could write in brackets what those are and whatnot. So in this case, we clearly see that we have zero degrees of freedom. 
Now, sometimes you might not be that lucky. You might have one DOF. You might have two DOF. Now, before you panic, um, sometimes it's perfectly normal to get that. You see, the question will be, it'll be question A, it'll say, do the degree of freedom analysis. Now, before you panic, you should just go and read question B or even question C, and you'll see they'll often say, okay, now, given that, you know, this mass flow rate is 200 kilograms a second, and then you'll know, oh, they just gave me one extra specific. So that means that had we ignored question, uh, like question A has one DOF. It, it basically, it's a trick to give you, uh, it gives you the answer, whatnot. And you know that with some extra information, then we'll be able to solve the question. And that's often you'll see in question B, you'll say, yeah, so this is the missing information. And this is, if you have two extra specifics that give you in question B, it means that your part A had two DOF. Now, we're going to go to the next question that I've chosen. Uh, this is uh, now the question states here. We have now a new a liquid mixture containing 30, uh, 30 mole percentage of benzene, 25 percentage of toluene, and the rest of it balance is xylene. Now, they also give more specifics about the products, the final streams, 98% uh, xylene. 96% uh, xylene as well coming up in the recovery stream. Um, on top of that, uh, there the question is a bit more complicated because now there's two columns. So now there's two columns we're going to have to do two separate degree of freedom analysis at each specific column. Now when you get to you know much later in semesters and whatnot, you'll start seeing questions where there might be you know, even four or five degree of analysis for each um, machinery equipment, if you will. And a lot of times you're also going to have an overall degree of freedom ana analysis where you just look at the entire system as something going in and everything going out of the system. Um, so you'll, you'll also see that as well. Another thing I want to point out is uh, if you look here, you know, let's say the, uh, the stream between column one and column two, you know, I wrote X, you know, mass composition fraction, uh, B2, and X, T2. Now, I did not bother to write uh, the mass fraction composition of the xylene. It is an unknown, but you won't, it's very, um, it's kind of useless, it's pointless, because we know that, in this case, there's three different chemical species, um, benzene, toluene, and xylene. And we know that in these, in these flow rates, unless otherwise, speci like the other, unless otherwise specified, for for this stream between the two, that the three compositions are obviously going to add up to one. So if we find the two fractions of just benzene and toluene, we automatically, you know, we know what the fraction is for xylene. So there's no need to double count, if you will, or add extra unknowns. It just makes it more complicated for us. So without further ado, we're going to start with column one here. We're going to write how many unknowns that we have. Now, if we look here, we see that um, we know the mass flow rate, and coming in here, we know all the mole, the moles that uh, for each specific uh, chemical species. So that's quite a bit of information right off the bat. Um, things get a little bit worse here, though. We see leaving column one, we have a uh, molar flow rate. No clue what uh, how much that is. We've got now another for the f um, flow two here. We have no molar flow rate for that stream. We don't know what it is. And of course, we don't know uh, the uh, mass fractions. So in all, that's going to be two n's there and two x's. So that means we're going to have four unknowns, OK? Um, we do know that there's three species, so for sure we're going to have a nice three balances to help us out, to help solve this out. And um, we also know that in the question it specifies uh, information about the recovery of X in the bottom flow. So that is finally, it's another specification. Um, so we get a nice zero DOF total in this scenario. Okay, now we're going to move on to column two. So now we see here, okay, so coming in here, 
Uh, we still don't know anything about molar flow rate of 2. No clue what that is, so that's going to affect us. Um, we don't know anything about molar flow rate stream 4. Uh, don't know anything about molar stream rate of uh, number 5. Nor do we know any of its um, mass fraction compositions. Okay, We clearly see that um, we had uh, 5 unknowns. First unknown was the molar fluid going into column two N two. We didn't know that. Um, coming out of column two, we had the molar flow rate N four. We had no clue how much that was, and the molar flow rate N five. We have no clue what, uh, how much is coming out there as well. Um, we don't know the mass fraction composition of N five for benzene, nor do we know it for toluene, and of course we don't know it for um, xylene. But that's you know it's the one minus uh, that's one uh, unknown we don't need to put. So that in total will give you five unknowns that I've written here in column two. Um, sorry about the writing. It's, it's a work in progress, if you will. Um, on top of that, um, though, we do know, of course, we have three chemical uh, species again. So we do have three balances. And we do have a specification given in the description of the question about the recovery of B. So we have four unknowns we can scrap off. So now we're left with one degree of freedom in column two. Now, you might think, okay, so does this mean that the question is possible self? No, it's not. Because this means that degree of freedom is also it's useful for telling you where to start in a problem. See, that's a big thing. You're given all this information, maybe four or five contrap machinery, and you're saying, whoa, where do I start? Well, whoever has the degree of freedom of zero, that is going to be where you start. Because uh, that, in this case, column one, will give us some piece of information in this case, N2, that we will then go on to use for calculations for column 2. So, once you know we do all the math for column 1, we'll have our N2, we can calculate column 2, and the problem will be solved, and then we would have 0 DOF for column 2. Only though, only if we start at column 1. So, um, yeah, that is degree of freedom analysis. Now, I just want to go over. First thing you do, read the question. Then you want to do is you're going to draw it out with all the flow chart and all the specific information of data, numbers. Then you're going to do the degree of freedom analysis because we want to know, A, is this question even solvable? And B, if it is solvable, where do I even start? And once you've gotten all that information down, you want to just start crunching the numbers, okay? And if you, know, if you don't do your degree of freedom analysis, Burke is going to tell you what are these Depenar calculations. All right, guys, that's... Uh, that's it for today, and I uh, hope you uh, understand it properly. Bye.